asking God to meet the needs of others, just seeking the face of God, asking God, asking God, asking God, give us this day our daily bread. That's asking God. Lord, forgive us from our sin. That's asking God. Lord, save my dad. Lord, save my mom or, or save my brother or sister. That's asking God. That's asking Him. And God, God longs for His people to ask Him. He even, gave, he even said, ask and you shall find. Uh, uh, you ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. He said that to His people. He said that to us. Ask. Seek, knock. A major aspect of prayer is asking. You have not because you ask not. And James even said that many of you don't have because you ask amiss. You're asking for the wrong things. But a part of this teaching in the next three days is knowing how to ask for the right things. Hallelujah. But relationship and worship and petitioning, asking God, asking Him. Those are the three main things that the Bible describes that our prayer life is to be made up out of. All the other things are just a branch or just a, uh, uh, shoots out of those three main things. And when we look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we see, and it's, this, is, this is awesome, in every single book of the Bible, and I did my own little investigation of this, and I found that every single book in the Bible, in some shape or form, there is some type of prayer being offered to God. Or there, is, or there is some kind of response to prayer that God is giving back. In every single book of the Bible, some form of prayer being offered to God. And again, prayer is not some ritualistic, dead, dry, religious, formal, one of these things. All right? It's not one of those things. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of... No, no, it's, that's not prayer. It's, that's not God's view of prayer. Real prayer, again, is when God's people are offering up worship, knowing that they're in relationship, and asking God for something. Asking God to do what only God can do. That's in every book of the Bible. God's plan, His will, is that you and I, His people, pray. I said it's His plan, it's His purpose, it's His will. God's people pray. And second, uh, I want you to turn your Bibles to Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. And I felt the Lord was leading me to this verse to deal with that verse this morning and as someone of an introduction to our study, but Second Chronicles chapter 7, this verse 14, this is one of the most powerful verses in the whole Bible. You get that? And if you don't know Second Chronicles 7, 14, uh, well, you're being introduced to it today. And this is what I refer to sometimes as the good refrigerator verse. It's a good memory verse, good verse to know. Second Chronicles 7 and verse 14. If you're there, say amen. And God was speaking here to Solomon. He was speaking to his people Israel. When the first temple, Solomon's temple, was being dedicated to the Lord. Long time ago, when Solomon's temple was being dedicated to the Lord, God spoke. And this is what he said. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. <laughs> I tell you, that's powerful. Hallelujah. I'm going to read it again. If my people 
which are called by my name. That's, if you have an expositors, see right there that says, that's believers. Shall humble themselves, that's humility, and pray and seek my faith. Face, that's the prayer of repentance. And turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. That's God's prescription for spiritual sickness. If my people, are you God's people today? Which are called by my name, God said. Hallelujah. Oh, that's good. It's like God has drawn a circle around us. And he said everything in that circle is mine. That's mine. Not only is it mine, but I put my name on you. Everyone, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, I will hear from heaven. That's a guaranteed promise. You, hear, you get that? I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. Now when we look at the world today, and I'm talking about, uh, about the secular world, but also the church world, it's so easy to have a gloom and doom mentality. You get that? It's so easy to think, oh, there is no hope for the world. There is no hope for the church. And understand this this morning. As it concerns the world as a whole, that's right. The world as a whole is going against the way of God and they're going to hell. The church as a whole is going the same direction. You get that? Just like Israel of old went that same direction, the church today is going the same direction as Israel of old did. It's going the same, it's going the same exact thing. It's going the same direction. But God said in His Word here, and this is a promise that you and I have to take personally. He said, if my people... I'm God's people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, then I, and turn from the wicked ways, then I, I will heal, hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. The question is, do we believe that? Do we believe that? Or is it a mentality that we have of, oh, you know what, there's even no sense anymore. I'm just going to do my thing and that's it. No, I believe in our day that God is raising up a people who will do exactly what he said here in 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 14. I know this, God's doing that at Family Worship Center. You get that? God is doing that at Family Worship Center. He is stirred up. He's not stirring it. He has stirred up a spirit of prayer. To seek the face of God. To call upon Him. Because God's Word is true. You get that? God's Word is true. He said again, if my people, which are called by my name, first of all, He said, if they humble themselves. Understand this, that true humility, true humility is when a person submits themselves to the righteousness of God and God's plan for righteousness which is Jesus Christ and faith in Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross true humility is when a person submits themselves to God's plan for righteousness that I cannot be righteous I cannot be right with God in my own way in my own ability in my own wisdom in my own strength God I submit myself to your way of righteousness that's what I do true humility is coming under God's plan of righteousness and not us forming our own way of righteousness and what I think one of the major aspects of the message of the cross that is going forth today is that God's plan of righteousness is by faith in Christ and Him crucified.